A Viking landing craft launched nearly a year ago that has traveled nearly half a billion miles is scheduled to set down on the surface of Mars at 7.53 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. Science editor Jules Bergman reports on the mission and its potentially cosmic importance. The first thing we're likely to see after Viking 1 touches down is Martian soil. It may look like this Earth's sand. More likely it will not. The camera will shoot the surface at the base of this foot pad, enabling scientists to immediately analyze the depth of dust or soil found on Mars. This is the test lander here at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. It does most everything the real Viking does, except it is here, not there. The second picture will be a panoramic view of the Martian surface. Other devices aboard will measure winds on the Martian surface and its temperature. A miniature seismograph will tell us if there are Mars quakes. Eight days after landing, the sample collector, Elias the Scooper, goes to work. It looks like a baby steam shovel and scoops up a handful of soil, dropping it into three miniature biological testing laboratories. The three labs all combined into this package would take up three full rooms here on Earth. It cost $50 million and has 40,000 electronic parts. By searching in several different ways, it can show us if there are any life processes or microbe-sized forms on Mars as we understand them. Early tomorrow morning, the lander will be separated from the orbiter and head down to the Martian surface. Using a heat shield for braking, then a parachute, and finally small rocket engines with many nozzles so as not to stir up dust on the surface, Viking should land safely right here, about 600 miles west of the original landing site, which looked too rough for the 1,300-pound spacecraft. By tomorrow, we should begin to know the answers to questions about life on Mars that have mystified mankind for thousands of years. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Pasadena. That's the news. I'm Harry Reisner. Good night. This has been ABC News with Harry Reisner. When Viking sent the first color pictures to Mars, the sky looked blue. Now earthly scientists aren't sure because it seems that Martian blue might really be pink. Jules Bergman has a report. Is the Martian sky blue or pink? Everybody assumed blue from the initial color camera pickup. Then this first print seemed to show a mixed blue and pink, enormously important to knowing what is in the Martian atmosphere above and beyond our own curiosity. We asked Dr. Carl Sagan. Mars is a new place. We've just gotten there for the first time. We don't know beforehand what the color balances are. Uh, the business of turning the little dial on your TV set to adjust the colors, we have yet to do. In another week or two, we should have the answer. Today's pictures seem to indicate a thin layer of dirt in front of Viking, but not much dust. Here, for example, is the landing pad, with no more dust than on landing day, and close by, the impression left by the protective shroud from the scooper sampler ejected last night. This second new picture today showed a rocky field around a crater. The rocks ranging in size from a few inches up to a foot and a half or close to two feet. And we now have the first weather report from Mars. Light easterly winds at 15 miles per hour, changing over to southeasterly tonight. Low, minus 122 degrees, warming up to minus 22 degrees tomorrow. Barometric pressure, 7.7 millibars. What weathermen like most about this is that no one will ever complain if it is wrong. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Pasadena.